You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Prosper Ops is a leading FinOps automation platform that reduces your cloud costs, minimizes commitment risk, and provides reporting and insights for business, finance, and accounting teams. Prosper Ops algorithms optimize cloud costs 24-7 so your engineers can focus on building in the cloud, not buying it. Save money, reduce risk, and streamline cloud financial management. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the New Stack Makers. I'm your host, Heather Joslin, Features Editor of the New Stack. And today we're going to talk about FinOps, a topic never more important than right now with these challenging economic times and as organizations are trying to get the more value out of everything they do. Our guest today is Matt Stelflug, who is a Senior FinOps Specialist at ProsperOps. Hi, Matt. Hello, Heather. Good to be here. Good to have you. Um, Matt, can you tell us a little bit about your background and also what ProsperOps does? Absolutely. Uh, so my current role as a FinOps specialist um, is with ProsperOps, and that is a, a rate optimization automation platform. Uh, however, prior to my FinOps pivot, I was always an infrastructure engineer. So I'm old enough to have data center experience before the cloud was a thing. Uh, hard to imagine, but uh, again, always on the infrastructure side, kind of full stack from storage to the edge network. And then that that uh, grew into a cloud career. So about five years of AWS experience, again, as like an enablement and automation and infrastructure engineer with AWS. And that um, dovetailed really nicely into a FinOps pivot. ProsperOps does, what does ProsperOps do? Yeah, so ProsperOps is a little bit different. It's a, it's, and what I mean by that is like kind of a, the concept of FinOps 2.0 versus 1.0. 1.0 platforms being like the ones that offer recommendations and observability, which is important. Mm -hmm. But importantly, ProsperOps is a, what I'd call a FinOps 2.0 tool. In other words, it's completely hands off. It's less of a tool that you have to interact with and swivel chair and more of an automation platform that simply mm -hmm. delivers autonomous savings outcomes via the application of objective math. So we're going to dive into into that more deeply in a minute. Um, uh, just a reminder, today's conversation is brought to you by ProsperOps, and let's just get started. Um, first, to get our, our listeners up to speed, um, they've how would you, how do you define FinOps? Yeah, uh, good question. It's, it's a broad topic. Um, in simple terms, it's a financial management exercise. Um, but additionally, like the FinOps Foundation themselves would describe um, it as like a cultural practice. Mm -hmm. And that's to infer this concept of a collaboration across business units. So engineering, uh, finance, um, and the actual business side itself, right? They all need to collaborate and understand the usage-based cost model and understand and work together towards the, the nirvana would be like unit economics. In other mm -hmm. words, extracting maximum business value uh, from every dollar they put into the cloud. How, how is that definition of FinOps different from the way organizations usually or often approach cloud cost and cloud use? The approach that I've seen is that organizations will take the, the legacy or data center approach and try to apply it to the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, that legacy or data center approach, again, would be I'm going to rent co-location facility. I'm going to buy with a big capital outlay, some, some hardware, network, storage, uh, compute, right? And I've got very predictable costs, uh, maybe even more than a year out, potentially. Uh, it's pretty mm -hmm. predictable because of that, uh, as long as you bought your hardware correctly. The cloud, conversely, of course, is usage-based. So... Your bill is comprised of what you use and what you pay for what you use. And mm -hmm. of course, what you use is much more granular than it has been previously. So you get this, this mode in which to get things done, people are always launching new things and maybe stopping things. And you've got this fluctuation and you've got these anomalies and there's either, these are other soft costs. So it's not just hardware and co-location. It's mm -hmm. now, not only do I pay for my compute and storage, but I pay for accessing it and transferring it from A to B. 
there's all this other like nuance to it um, that's really hard to forecast without some kind of a reference workload. Mm-hmm. Um, what I mean by that is like if you've got a workload you're familiar with, it's already in the cloud, and you can kind of like gauge it as a reference and say, I will be similar to this, then you can like base it off of something. But mm-hmm. if you're coming in from scratch, let's take a simple example, like how much will it cost to store data in a bucket, in an S3 bucket? Well, okay, the amount of data that the storage class uh, it's in, you can probably tell me. But now let's talk about data access patterns. Now you need to understand from where is someone writing or reading? How often, how much turnover is there in the data? Mm -hmm. Um, Most app teams, even that are intimate with an application, can't answer all those questions and therefore are going to be probably materially off in in their estimation. So here's what happens, I think, in terms of like, again, the differentiation of the cloud model versus like, uh, or a FinOps model versus the traditional model, is that you've got to establish guardrails internally. You've got to establish your own reference mm-hmm. architecture. Ideally, we're getting to like a point of infrastructure as a code. Um, but once you set that up and you've got, again, tagging is a big deal here too, so you can allocate correctly. But once you're kind of there, what you've got to get leadership buy into and financial buy into is like, you kind of have to let people spend what they're going to spend, which is finance typically is a little resistant to that initially. Mm -hmm. Um, But then you can establish some norms. And now your job is as a FinOps practitioner, establish those norms, make sure they're allocated correctly. And now you watch for anomalies and you react to anomalies aggressively. Mm -hmm. So this is some of the change that we're talking about. Good question. Oh, thank you. Um, what are what are some of the obstacles to getting engineers on board with a FinOps uh, strategy? Yeah, um, I'd like to like remind everyone, and if this is a technical audience, they probably don't need the reminder or it'll, or it'll resonate. But engineers are like the protectors of application availability and uptime. If if anything goes wrong at any point, like they're getting paged. Or, you know, there's, mm-hmm. an, there's an app called PagerDuty or something, right? That's what I mean by page. Um, but they're getting alerted and they're, they're going to be disturbed. So first of all, uh, this, this idea that they don't want to engage is, it sits a little wrong with me because they do. It's just that they have to be protective of the integrity of the system overall. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... The biggest obstacle I feel like is is folks will come to engineering and say, well, this instance is too big or this this storage tier is inappropriate or this volume type is inappropriate. And more often than not, those recommendations are focused on some metrics and that may be accurate in that myopic scope, but there's other metrics to consider. Mm -hmm. Simple example, you know, obviously, compute, uh, CPU, and memory utilization, key metrics, but that's not it. Um, I've had instances that had a lot of I/O uh, workload uh, or I/O throughput and, and and operations per second, right? So, I may have an instance size to meet a bandwidth, uh, a throughput, or a device attachment requirement and not exclusively to just CPU and memory. So it may look, if you just look at some metrics, Mm -hmm. that it's uh, over-provisioned. But in fact, for the metrics I care about, it's not. And I can't go down because then then I'm uh, not fulfilling the requirement from some other metric. So the key is to like work with your engineering team and ask them, what metrics do we care about when we're talking about right-sizing this? or optimizing storage? What metrics do you care about? What do you look at when you validate a recommendation? So you have a, so you have a common language between the business side and the engineering yeah. side and, and everyone, um, you're not making an arbitrary measure that has nothing to do with what the engineers and developers do. Um, 
Prosper Ops just published a book called The Engineer's Guide to Cloud Cost Optimization, which we'll link to in the article that accompanies this podcast. There's a lot in there. There's a, it's a pretty deep dive. Um, what what do you think are some of the key takeaways or best practices that you'd like to highlight that that are outlined in that book? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's a bunch in there, and and the concepts are probably familiar to anyone that's been around cloud for any period of time, right? Uh, these are things like right sizing, auto scaling, uh, scheduling, you know, stop and start cyclically, cyclically. Um, spot instances, uh, refactoring legacy monoliths into more like cloud uh, native services or, or microservice mm-hmm. architectures. Um, and the approach that I would recommend is this, because again, this is, FinOps is always a cycle. You don't try to get it all right the first go. You inform mm-hmm. yourselves, you, you identify some opportunities, and then you execute those opportunities. And you just repeat these three things over and over. So as you identify triage based on, imagine like a quadrant of, of uh, risk with uh, impact, right? So you want to do the mm-hmm. high impact, low risk items first. And of course, uh, high risk, low impact would be last. So, uh, you know, do the low hanging fruit. Uh, but then indeed for those high impact, high risk, these are things that need context from subject matter experts. So engage mm-hmm. them, but understand that this will be like a longer engagement than the, the low risk uh, types of engagements. Um, so that triage concept, I think is critical because then you want to maintain momentum. And so as you iterate through this cycle, don't get hung up on like, well, this is going to take six months. Keep that running, but do some easy things as well. Um, the other big point that that book kind of highlights is this concept of, again, back to what a cloud bill is. It's what you use and what you paid for what you use. The traditional Rec- wisdom, recommendations, even from the, the FinOps Foundation is do your engineering uh, or resource optimization first, mm-hmm. and then you can optimize the financial side. This is where ProsperOps, uh, I think, objectively differs and says you don't need to do that. And, and this is in contrast to the traditional kind of savings plan, if we're talking AWS, the savings plan centric model of, of rate optimization. Prosperops is a very different methodology using convertible reserved instances, meaning that with our automation, we can adapt your rate optimization instruments to your engineering realities in real time. And therefore, you do not have to defer your rate optimization until after your resource optimization is complete. You can do them at the same time and basically mm-hmm. eat your cake. Just one more question. Um making sure listeners understand the difference between resource optimization and rate optimization. Could you define each? Yeah, this is, this is the, this is again, the concept of uh, the bill is what you're going to use and then what you pay for what you use. So uh, the resources are what you use and then the rate is what you pay for what you use. And indeed go ahead and attack uh, resource optimization, you know, right size and spot and, and, and do some horizontal flexibility in your app. All that mm-hmm. stuff is great. And then rate optimization is simply making sure that whatever you choose to use uh, in, your, in your cycle of, in your cloud journey, uh, that you try to pay the, the best rate for whatever that is. Um, mm-hmm. And again, with Prosper Ops, that is that it's autonomously achieved on your behalf real time. And that's a wrap. Uh, we want to thank our guest, Matt Stelflug for uh, Prosper Ops for joining us today. Thank you, Matt. Thanks again, Heather. Yeah, appreciate the conversation. And uh, we want to thank our, our uh, sponsor today, uh, Prosper Ops. And we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. This has been Heather Joslin for the New Stack Makers. We'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.